Once again, tens of thousands poured into Wembley and took full advantage of Sir Arthur Elvin's well-organised arrangements for the great match of the year, the result of which, of course, was anybody's guess. went back to that other Arsenal-Newcastle clash of 1932. That Wembley Cup final was attended by King George V, and it provided an incident that's been a point of discussion ever since. Arsenal were one up, then Newcastle's Jimmy Richardson chased the ball right up to the Arsenal line, but did the ball cross it? Movie Tone's exclusive film, which was, of course, later reproduced in the press, gave a clear and definite answer to the question. Play continued, and centre forward Jimmy Allen equalised for Newcastle and later scored again to win the match. And now, in 1952, Arsenal and Newcastle United were meeting again. Newcastle, the holders, in black and white stripes. For the Prime Minister, who came onto the field to meet the teams, this occasion was a novel experience. And that must be a rare pleasure for such an experienced man as Winston Churchill. The two Joes met for the toss-up, Mercer and Harvey. Mercer won it for Arsenal. Jackie Melbourne kicked off for Newcastle, and a hundred thousand voices got going as well as the players. The Gunners were soon in possession, and as if to show that injuries meant nothing to them, went away strongly. In a few minutes, they nearly scored from an overhead by Dougie Lishman. Nasty moment for Newcastle manager Stan Seymour. Still more so for Newcastle defenders when you analyse the shot. Ronnie Simpson is beaten and Bob Carl nearly handles in desperation. The ball just goes wide. Still, it's only goals that count and the Tynesiders now started foraging for goals. Jackie Milburn led the attack but Joe Mercer, number six, was always on the spot. It was while Newcastle were putting on the pressure that any luck Arsenal had left over was lost. Wally Barnes was injured. This brought Tom Whittaker, Arsenal's manager, into the picture. First aid for Wally's knee, but in vain. After half an hour of the match, she was out of it. Newcastle continued to drive ahead against the Gunners team of ten men, and soon George Swindon was being put through it. Arsenal's goalie was in top form, but a goalie can't be everywhere, and once when he was out of position, a Newcastle shot was brilliantly headed away by Lionel Smith on the goal line. Yes, plenty of thrills, but no decision at half-time. Arsenal, still a team of ten, kicked off. Lucky Arsenal, they used to be called, but plucky is a better word now. Newcastle went right into the attack, and a series of raids were repelled by the Gunners' famous defence. Newcastle simply couldn't get that goal, nor for their part could Arsenal. Jimmy Logie, fresh from hospital, worked away trying to do the job of two men. In fact, Arsenal's reduced forward line did get near to scoring, as for example when Dougie Lishman headed onto the bar. Spectators naturally had plenty of advice to offer at critical moments, and throughout this great cup final, one crisis seemed to follow another. George Swindon certainly had moments when the word crisis may have seemed an understatement. Then, after some 35 minutes of the second half, Bobby Mitchell, Newcastle's left winger, came dribbling in, beating one man after another and looked a certain scorer. But no, he lost his chance. Still, soon afterwards, he sent it to George Robledo, who headed the goal of the match. In the few minutes left, Alec Forbes and Fred McMichael collided, but then they parted the best of friends. A free kick followed, but no Arsenal goal, and Wembley certainly did look like a field of battle with but few survivors. It was the end, and that's obviously what he thinks, too. Yes, the battle was over. Now, with the men he'd led so gallantly, Joe Mercer congratulated the victors. Joe Harvey and his team had done what no team had accomplished this century. They'd won the cup two years running. Mr 
Winston Churchill was there to present the cup and he presented it. And Mubito managed to get a word to the triumphant skipper. Well, I'm very proud indeed to be taking this cup back to Tangside for the second time in two years. That's it, the cup holders hold the cup.